William Richard Bradford, known as Bill, was born in 1948. Not a lot is known about his childhood or his upbringing, or whether he had parents who loved and cared for him. But something in Bill's life turned him into the monster that he is. When Bradford was 36 years old and living in Los Angeles, he was out on bail for a sexual assault crime that he was awaiting trial for. He went out one evening for a drink and met a young lady called Shari Miller. She worked in a popular bar called The Meat Market, but her aspiring dream was to be a model. She was talking to Bradford about her dreams and he lied to her, telling her that he was a professional photographer who could take her shots for a portfolio to start her on her way in the modelling career she wanted. She reluctantly agreed to go with Bradford. He took her to a secluded campsite, a decision she made which ultimately cost her her life. Bradford started taking photographs of Shari at the campsite in North LA. It was proving a great cover for what was to happen. Bradford encouraged some provocative poses from Shari and not long after this, he strangled her. When she was dead, he removed any distinguishing marks from her body, such as tattoos, and removed her top, hoping this would stop her from being identified. He moved her blooded body to a car park in Hollywood where she was discovered, and with no way to identify her, she was given the name Jane Doe number 60. This all happened in the July of 1984. Not long after the murder of Shari, Bradford had the taste for murder. When his young 15-year-old neighbour, Tracy Campbell, went missing from her home, she also wanted to be a model. And when she heard that Bradford had offered to help her with her portfolio, she agreed for him to transport her to a place for great photos. This, of course, was the deserted campsite in North LA. He again took lots of provocative photos of Tracy, and when he was done, he strangled her. This time, Bradford didn't take the time to move her, but instead, he covered her in the top that he removed from Shari and left her to be found. The police had been searching for someone for Shari's brutal murder and had put both murders together as a crime by just one man. When they got a lead from a witness who stated they saw Tracy with Bradford, the hunt was on for Bradford and he was now their number one suspect. And with previous outstanding crimes hanging over him, the police felt that he was their man. A search warrant was executed and the search of Bradford's home was underway. The police discovered many photographs of over 50 women in his home. They managed to find the photos of Tracy within those. They found the photos also of a lady who resembled Jane Doe, number 60, with all of her tattoos in the picture. This is when the police were eventually able to identify the victim as Shari. They looked at Shari's poses and recognised the place where her photos were taken, by an area of rock where Bradford made the women pose. The police went to this area and this is when Trace's body was eventually found. She was wrapped in Shari's top and her body was very decomposed. Bradford was arrested and charged with the two murders. In 1988, a trial had been set for Bradford. He decided that he would be his own defence lawyer. He did not offer any arguments against his charges and wasn't able to prove any points of his innocence so the prosecution branded him a serial killer. Bradford was asked about the other 50 women in the photos, to which he offered no information, but did say to the court, think of how many you don't even know about. This implied that he in fact had murdered other women during his active time. The jury didn't take long to come back with the judgment of guilty and Bradford was sentenced to the death penalty for the two murders in the first degree. Bradford appealed against these allegations and as he felt 
that the notorious death row at San Quentin Prison was unbearable, he decided to get a real lawyer in 1998 to speed up his execution. He began writing poetry and was attracting a lot of media attention and was then labelled the death row poet. Shockingly, five days before the date of Bradford's execution, he changed his mind and didn't want to be killed and stated that he was in fact innocent of the murders. An appeal was lodged. Meanwhile, the police were still making headway with the women photographed by Bradford and one photo had been identified. This was number 28 and named as Donnelly Campbell de Hamel. Her body had been found in a canyon in Malibu and Bradford was identified as the last person to have seen Donnelly alive in the Frygate bar. Some pictures have been identified as Bradford's ex-wives who were alive, but since being questioned had told police that they were sexually assaulted by Bradford during their marriage and formal complaints were lodged. Bradford was known to have spent some time in Michigan, Florida, Texas, Oregon, Illinois, Kansas and Louisiana. The authorities are unsure as to how many real victims of Bradford there are and still to this day he has not identified all of his victims. Not all of the women that were photographed have been identified and as Bradford died in Vacaville Prison Medical Facility of natural causes on March the 10th 2008 at age 60 we are never going to know exactly how many murders this despicable serial killer actually committed. <laughs>